Hi everyone, welcome back again to another instructional video in Mathematics 9. Today we are going to talk about quadratic functions. Now let us first identify when do we say that our given is a quadratic function. I have several examples here for us to test our knowledge. First, I have y is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Is it a quadratic function? Sometimes it can be written as f of x or function of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. So as you can see, what only change is that uh, the y variable and function of x. Technically, when you give a function to your x value, that becomes your y. So sometimes um, it is written as y is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, or it can also be written as f of x or function of x is equal to 2x plus 3x plus 1. Now, such example, what, whatever or wherever it is written, it is a quadratic function because we are giving a function to your variable x. So it is a quadratic function. Now let's move on with the second example. 5x squared plus 7x, is it a quadratic function? No, it is not because we are not giving function to your x or there is no y value. So it's not a quadratic function. Now, third example, x squared minus 9 is equal to 15. Is it a quadratic function? Again, it is not a quadratic function because we are not giving a function to your variable x or no value of y. Now, for the third example, y is equal to 3x squared minus 9. Is it a quadratic function? Yes, it is. And for the last example, y is equal to x, a quantity of x plus 1 squared plus 2. Now, you can also rewrite this as y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 3 when you expound um, x plus 1 squared plus 2. This is your exp um, simplified form, x squared plus 2x plus 3, which is a quadratic function also. Now, quadratic function can not only be expressed or can be shown in an equation. Sometimes, it can be shown as a table of values. Now, how do we know if a given table of values is a quadratic function? The easiest way to do this is um, to see its graph. Now, I have here the graph of this table of values. Now, as you can see, um, negative 5 and 3 will be plotted here. Negative 5 and positive 3. So this is the first point. For the second point is negative 4 and 0. And it is plotted here. Negative 3, 1 will be plotted here. Fourth point is negative 2, 0. So it's here. And the last point is negative 1, 3 plotted here. Now, when we connect these five points, this forms a parabola. Now, this parabola actually is the graph of a quadratic function. Now, we say that this table of values represents a quadratic function because when we graph all the points, it forms a parabola. And a graph is a quadratic function if it forms a parabola shaped like this. Now, let's expound more about a parabola. A parabola can be determined by its opening. Sometimes it opens upward like this. And sometimes it opens downward. It also has an axis of symmetry. It has intercepts, the point where the graph intercepts the x-axis, those are your intercepts. And of course, the vertex, which is the lowest point of your parabola if it opens upward. This is the lowest point. It cannot go 
um, down anymore. This is the lowest point. And if the parabola opens downward, of course, the vertex is the highest point. Now, let's identify these parts of the parabola in our given example here. We determine the opening of the parabola. Of course, it opens upward or downward? It opens upward. Next is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is here. So it is negative 3. Next are the intercepts. The intercepts are two points. It intercepts at negative 4 and negative 2. Negative 4 and negative 2. And of course, the vertex of the parabola or the lowest point is here with coordinates negative 3 and then negative 1. Next, let us try now to discuss how are we going to transform quadratic function into its vertex form. Now, the vertex form is in the form of y is equal to a quantity of x minus h squared plus k. Now, let's try to consider an example in transforming a quadratic function into its vertex form y is equal to a quantity of x minus h squared plus k. I have here given x squared plus 8x minus 21. The first thing we have to do here is to group the linear term and the quadratic term, which is x squared plus 8x grouped in a parenthesis and then leave the constant term outside. Now, what are we going to do next here is to think of a number that we're going to add here to make this um whatever in the parenthesis, a perfect square binomial. So how are we going to do that? We can use the computation of b over 2 squared. So your b comes from your linear term. The coefficient is 8, so that's what we are going to use. 8 divided by 2 gives you 4, and then square that gives you 16. Now, this 16 is what we are going to write here. And then, this 16 also is what we are also going to sub subtract from your constant term. Why? Because there is no value for A outside of the first group. So, we just um, subtract whatever we got. From the computation of b over 2 squared. So we'll have x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 21 minus 16. Remember that we have to add it here in the parenthesis and then subtract in your constant to balance the equation. Now we can now have this term inside the parenthesis as a perfect square binomial. So this will now be x plus 4 squared. Negative 21 minus 16 gives us negative 36. So this will be y is equal to x plus 4 squared minus 37 in the vertex form. Now let's try to consider a quadratic function to be transformed to its vertex form when given that there is a value for a other than 1. Now in this case, if I have y is equal to 2x squared plus 24x plus 11, the value of a happens to be 2. So what are we going to do first? Just like before, we have to group the quadratic term and the linear term in a parenthesis and leave the constant term outside. Now, second 
is that we have to factor the value of a here so that it will be just uh, left with x squared. So we are going to factor 2 from 2x squared plus 24x. So we'll now have 2 there and then x squared. And then this becomes 12x because uh, 24 x divided by 2 gives only gives you 12x now just like before we have to think of a number that we are going to add here to make whatever in the parenthesis a perfect square binomial and then at the same time subtract that from the constant term now this time it's a little bit tricky because we have a value for a now this is how we are going to do it First, we are going to get uh, b over 2 squared, just like before. So that will be uh, b value is 12. So that's 12 divided by 2 gives you 6. Square that, you'll get 36. Now that 36 is what we are going to write here inside the parentheses. Now in this case, a case or particular example, we cannot just sub subtract 36 here because there is a value of 2 in your A. Now, what you're going to do is to multiply that A from whatever that you have got here in B over 2 squared. So that is 12 divided by 2 gives you 6 squared is 36 times 2 gives you 72. Now that 72 is what you are going to subtract from the constant. Now again, don't be confused because of the two different numbers. This becomes 72 because of the value of A, which is 2 that comes from the first part of the quadratic function. Now, moving on, we'll have this. It will now be 2 quantity of x squared plus 12, 12x plus 36 plus 11 minus 72, which can now be simplified inside the parentheses as a perfect square binomial of 2. There should be 2 here for the value of a, 2 quantity of x plus 12 squared minus 61 because 11 minus 72 gives you negative 61. So that is it for our instructional video for this week. I hope you learned a lot. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye!